welcome back to Switch to Linux and another Distro Wars. And this is a viewer requested. We're going to look at MX Linux and Netrunner and hopefully MX Linux boots this time. I was having issues in the virtual box. That's not something that's wrong with MX Linux. That's the fact that this guy right here doesn't often update software. And so the virtual box is version five, which I shouldn't be running right now. But we're actually in the next couple weeks, we're going to be updating the systems, I believe. So we'll get some of these better things running. Uh, but anyway, I did have to fight with MX Linux to get it started, but it started today it updated today it's restarted again so hopefully it starts we'll see but anyway we are going to have a look at these and this is specifically the kde version on the advanced hardware stack so i was asked to do a comparison of mx linux kde version versus netrunner both are debian based and running plasma and so that's really what we wanted to look at for today so having a look over at their respective websites, MX Linux over here, nice and simple. I like MX. This is one of the ones that I use for my writing PC, which is a Lenovo S21e. That's where I write my books on. And uh, it's a nice little computer for doing that type of stuff. It works well. They have a system D option and a non system D option. So if you're opposed to system D, they do have an option. In fact, I believe the, the default system is no system D, but you can get it with system D as well. And um, they have a couple different options in their download page. So if you uh, find, uh, where'd the download button go? Uh, if I have this, the uh, website full screen, it's easier to find. We'll just go that one there. I thought there was one on the menu. Anyway, uh, click the big yellow button that says download, dummy. And uh, we'll go ahead and do that. So when you head on over, the, the default for this is XFCE. And it's kind of a customized one. You can see the picture here. They put the bar on the side and things like that. Very nice layout. Uh, they do have the Plasma version as well. Now, they have a couple different options uh, on the Plasma, excuse me, on the XFCE version, you have a 32-bit, you have some 64, and you have the 64 advanced hardware stack. Uh, so, or advanced hardware support. I guess is what it technically is there. And so what this is, is it is a version of the Linux kernel for Debian that will allow you to run more recent hardware. That is one of the critiques of Debian is that it does not have the bleeding edge kernels. And so some of the newest hardware may not be supported out of the box. So the advanced hardware support will allow that to work. So you can go ahead and use that and it'll work work very well. The Plasma version is only available in 64-bit and only as the AHS version. And then you can just go ahead and download it and install it. I really like MX Linux for all the extra tools that it has. It, I don't remember it being super bloated in software. We'll have a look at it. I, there's more software than I would like. I do remember deleting a bunch of stuff from it when I created my writing computer. Uh, but that's fairly easy enough. Now heading over to Netrunner, and there is a brand new version of Netrunner, which was just released a couple days ago. This is the one we are running, and uh, this is the XOXO release, or is it the 2020 release? I mean, I don't know. Is this Kisses and Hugs or 2020? You guys let me know. If Netrunner guys are watching, uh, let me know. What do we got here? So you have a desktop version. You have the core, Pinebook, and for Droid. That's kind of neat. That's uh, definitely fun. And so looking over this, we have the core and we have the, the basic build. Your difference here is that your core is the bare bones. So if you don't want a bloated system, you know exactly the software you want, you're gonna want to do the core. Now it's not updated to the latest version yet, but they have said in their release notes that's coming very soon. So you can probably expect that within probably a few days, few weeks maybe. And then the version we have here is actually the full one, which contains a lot of software. So you can see the size difference here, 2.6 gig versus 1.2 gig. And that's really your difference. But you'll see that your Plasma version is going to be the, the same. The Debian version is 10.3 on Netrunner Core. It's 10.7 on the brand new one. And again, the core will be updated with the latest uh, Buster 10.7 when that is done. So again, you can go ahead and just download the direct link or the torrent. So there is what we have out of the box. And really, Netrunner, it's, it's Debian with a few extra tools installed to make everything work out well. So with that, we're going to go ahead and jump on over to the desktop. Let's go ahead and get these guys installed. And uh, well, 
they're already installed. Let's go ahead and get these guys booted up. And then we will have a look at what each one of these guys looks like side by side. All right, so here we are on the MX Linux login screen. You can see it's very plasma. Very nice. I'll enter my super secret password. It's definitely not one, two, three. So here we are on the MX desktop, and uh, this is the Plasma version. So out of the box, uh, this is pretty much exactly what we get. It's going to be very Plasma and very MX Linux all at the same time. Our menu is our MX Linux icon. Our wallpaper, of course, is very nice. We do have the package updater down here. So this will check for updates, and it will prompt you to update. So I did update this guy, though, today, this morning. So we don't see any updates. And... Like I said, the the best part about uh, the best part about MX Linux is the tools. This is really the thing that causes it to stand out more than many other distros. We have a live USB maker. Not every distro has one of these, and it's certainly I think better than using Etcher and other tools out there. If you have uh, if you have an MX Linux or Linux Mint has a similar tool in it as well. Snapshot creates a full ISO of your entire operating system. That is epic for you get everything perfectly right. Take a snapshot, store in your backups. And then if something ever happens, just reinstall that image. You've lost some data, but that's actually not too bad. We do have some boot options, boot repair, user management. We have system cleanup. So you can do some system cleanup without having to use bleach bit. If you're running NVIDIA, we have NVIDIA driver, installer, configurations, codec installer. So if you want to run some multimedia, you can go ahead and do that. Here's Conky, which is this guy over here. And then here's our tweaking our settings. And when you go in to, to, mark, to, to start tweaking settings, it's actually going to make a backup of the default configuration. So if you like goof something up, you're like, oh man, what's, gonna, what's going on here? You just go ahead and <laughs> reinstall it. Here's a package installer. We have a repo manager. Now the package installer here is nice. I think this is the simple MX one. So this guy here is just a very, very simple pa uh, package installer. Web browsers, here you go. You have just so many different, uh, different versions of web browsers. Here's your various docs. So this doesn't have every piece of software available, but it does have all of the major software you might be looking for. Uh, I'm saddened. Evolution is not in here. Why? Why? Uh, but anyway, that's the thing. So uh, we can go ahead and use that. We also have the stable repo here. So you can go through each of these guys here. So here's um, basically this is just like your um, your synaptic package manager. So I'm going to see if evolution is actually over here or not. It should be in the system somewhere. I should be able to install it. Um, MX test repo. This is for testing packages. So use these ones at your own risk. Here's, uh, there's LibreOffice evolution. Just get rid of that. So you can see you have a lot of different things. We have back ports. We also have flat packs available as well. So these are a very nice package installer for this purpose that it just has a lot of these already built in ready to use in an easy to use format. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we might also, I don't know if we have Synaptic on here as well. There, sh there might be another uh, package installer as well. I'm not sure on this one. So they don't have Discover, which usually comes with that. So yeah, I think you're, you're gonna mostly just be dealing with this particular package installer. But you can see here's the, um, the flat packs available. So anything available in flat pack, you can go ahead and install that as well. So there is what we have there. Here's iDevice Mounter. If you have a, um, uh, an Apple device, you can go ahead and mount the Apple devices. So the MX tools itself are the things that causes MX Linux to really stand out. As far as other applications installed by default, we do have, you know, we got some games and stuff, uh, graphics. We have GIMP. We have Libre Draw, Simple Scanner, DigiScam couple different scanners, PDFs. We have Firefox, Torrents, Thunderbird, Multimedia. We have Clement for our main audio player. Here's all of our MX tools again. Here's our LibreOffice. It is going to be an older version because it's based on Debian, and they're probably both going to be that way, but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, let's boot this guy up. I think it's 6.1 on this. Now, if you do want the latest version of it, you can actually use the, um, use the Debian backports to get the more recent version, but out of the box, it's going to have uh, 6 point, 6.1. It's a little bit older version of LibreOffice at this point in time, but again, you can in the software installer, you can actually install the, the more recent versions as well. 
So out of the box, uh, it is very, very good, very lightweight. It will generally it's going to boot up on anything you want to boot up with it and you're not really going to have any serious issues with mx linux this is like i said the version i use well i use the xfce version but i do use mx linux on my laptop because it is so nice it is so fast uh clean and uh really it just looks very appealing out of the box so as far as tools are concerned the tools are really what causes MX Linux to stand out. The advanced hardware support is going to allow you to run a Debian-based system on a newer, uh, newer piece of hardware. And then we have Debian backports at the click of a button to install some of the more recent software as well. So that makes MX Linux a really good, really attractive choice. So now let's go ahead and have a look at Netrunner. So here we are on the login screen. You can see it's just a, a standard login screen, although a little bit more customized than the one we saw in MX Linux. And in my opinion, not quite as pretty. All right, so here we are on the desktop of Netrunner. And what we can spot here, of course, things are, all the icons are a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to read. They've defaulted things to a little bit larger formatting and sizes. Nothing all too... Um, amazing there. You see our menu here is the, the dash menu. I think this is called the dash menu. So um, this is actually the only distro I know of that ships this one out of the box. I'm sure there might be more, but it's a nice, nice full screen menu. So we have our favorites over here. We can shut down, reboot, whatever here, and then you can just search by your applications. This one is actually a very tablet friendly menu rather than some of the other ones out there. So if you're running Plasma on a tablet or uh, on a touchscreen like PC, then this one's actually a, a pretty good, pretty good bet here. So this one is a little bit more bloated. Again, they do have a core which doesn't have any extra software. So I'm less bothered by the excess of bloat in this one because they do have the multiple options. But we have a lot of different games. We got Burger Space, we got K Mines, Mahjong, Sudoku, and we got Steam. That's nice, having Steam out of the box. We have GIMP and Inkscape and Krita. So three uh, very powerful tools, no lightweight tools. Uh, whereas MX Linux did have a few lightweight ones. We do have Skype installed out of the box. Um, that's either going to be really, you're either really going to love that or you're really going to hate that. You have KDE Marble, which is like a, um, a mapping program. Thunderbird, Firefox, ESR. I believe the Thunderbird is also ES, uh, ESR, if I remember correctly. Under our multimedia, uh, we have Audacious, uh, G Music Browser, Handbrake, Caden Live, SM Player, Yarok. Never used that one. But um, Office here is, uh, we'll get, we're going to come back and see what version of Office we're shipping in this one here. There's Grub Settings. Here's our basic system, just network drives, utilities. We have Voku Screen. SUSE imaging, that's interesting, okay. Web, we do have WhatsApp, Blech. we have Telegram, we have Skype, eee. HookTube, um, sounds like some, some Vegas version of YouTube to me, I, I don't know. But anyway, that's what we have as far as software, checking out our LibreOffice version. It looks like we're probably gonna have the same version 6.1, but uh, we'll go ahead and Boot this guy up the rest of the way, see what version we have over here. About LibreOffice 6152, same exact version. Now where you're going to run into the issues with Netrunner is all, although it's going to work well with a lot of newer hardware, they've kind of worked on it with that. They don't have any extra tools as we saw. So we don't have we don't have any serious tools built specifically into this. So we're not going to be able to run your backports. We're not going to be able to get some of the more recent hardware or more recent software. Um, I don't know if there's flat pack support. And uh, let's see, is there even a software manager? We have okay, we do have Discover and we have Synaptics. Let's boot up Discover. See what we get over here. So, even though Caden Live is already installed, I, I don't I don't even know if there's a flat pack plugin for Discover. I have no idea. Um, my inclination is flat packs probably not set up. You can probably install it, but uh, I didn't check the release notes. So, 
MX Linux itself is going to have a lot more functions and features out of the box. We have a separate listing of tools to get your backports. You can have more recent software utilizing those backport tools. And you have the ability to have a couple different desktop environments and a couple of different um, uh, different hardware stacks, different kernels really, just to make sure that things are gonna work well for you no matter which direction you're trying to go. As far as, uh, as, far as everything else is concerned, I don't see Netrunner as really being anything different from uh, just Debian with Plasma installed. Maybe there is something else under the hood that I'm not seeing, but comparing the two of them, I think the MX is the clear winner because we have tools, we have backports, we have flat packs easily installable, everything is easily manageable in the GUI. We also actually have a software updater that will let us know that there's software ready to go. Although I think Discover might do that, I just don't remember it being there at all one way or the other. I'm just seeing if there's any any final things on there or not, and there's, there's really not. So ultimately, between these two, I think the MX Linux gives us a much more compelling thing. Not that Netrunner is bad. I'd probably rather want to run Netrunner if I want to run Debian and Plasma. I'd probably rather want to run Netrunner than run our um, uh, run our just Debian and install Plasma on it because it's going to look better. We're going to have we're going to have some software, some changes in in the hardware. Everything else is going to work a little bit better, I think. But still. I don't see a compelling reason to use that when comparing these two to MX Linux. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one as a winner to MX Linux for wanting to run Debian with Plasma installed just because the extra tools just just make it go that extra mile, that extra step. Let me know your thoughts on all these. Did I miss something tragic somewhere in here that might change my opinions? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for coming along and for supporting the show. You have a look at switchlinks.com forward slash support for other support options, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.